Nitrous Oxide, Wikipedia Article Audio Nitrous Oxide, commonly known as laughing gas or nitrous, is a chemical compound, an oxide of nitrogen with the formula N2O. At room temperature, it is a colorless non-flammable gas, with a slight metallic scent and taste. At elevated temperatures, nitrous oxide is a powerful oxidizer similar to molecular oxygen. Uses Rocket motors Internal combustion engine Aerosol propellant Medicine Recreational use Safety Mental and manual impairment Neurotoxicity and neuroprotection Oxygen deprivation Vitamin B12 deficiency Prenatal development Chemical-slash-physical risks Mechanism of action Euphoric effect Anxiolytic effect Analgesic effect Properties and reactions History Early use Anesthetic use As a patent medicine Production Industrial methods Laboratory methods Atmospheric occurrence Nitrous oxide has significant medical uses, especially in surgery and dentistry, for its anesthetic and pain-reducing effects. Its name laughing gas, coined by Humphrey Davy, is due to the euphoric effects upon inhaling it, a property that has led to its recreational use as a dissociative anesthetic. It is on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines, the most effective and safe medicines needed in a health system. It also is used as an oxidizer in rocket propellants, and in motor racing to increase the power output of engines. Emissions by source Biological processes Nitrous oxide occurs in small amounts in the atmosphere but recently has been found to be a major scavenger of stratospheric ozone, with an impact comparable to that of CFCs. It is estimated that 30% of the N2O in the atmosphere is the result of human activity, chiefly agriculture. Environmental impact Greenhouse effect Nitrous oxide may be used as an oxidizer in a rocket motor. This is advantageous over other oxidizers in that it is not only non-toxic, but due to its stability at room temperature is also easier to store and relatively safer to carry on a flight. As a secondary benefit, it may be decomposed readily to form breathing air. Its high density and low storage pressure enable it to be highly competitive with stored high-pressure gas systems. In a 1914 patent, American rocket pioneer Robert Goddard suggested nitrous oxide and gasoline as possible propellants for a liquid-fueled rocket. Nitrous oxide has been the oxidizer of choice in several hybrid rocket designs. The combination of nitrous oxide with hydroxyl-terminated polybutadiene fuel has been used by Spaceship One and others. It also is notably used in amateur and high-power rocketry with various plastics as the fuel. Nitrous oxide also may be used in a monopropellant rocket. In the presence of a heated catalyst, N2O will decompose exothermically into nitrogen and oxygen, at a temperature of approximately 1070 degrees Fahrenheit. Because of the large heat release, the catalytic action rapidly becomes secondary, as thermal auto decomposition becomes dominant. In a vacuum thruster, this may provide a monopropellant specific impulse of as much as 180 s. 
while noticeably less than the ISP available from hydrazine thrusters, the decreased toxicity makes nitrous oxide an option worth investigating. Nitrous oxide is said to deflagrate at approximately 600 degrees Celsius at a pressure of 309 psi. At 600 psi for example, the required ignition energy is only 6 joules, whereas N, 2O at 130 psi a 2500 joule ignition energy input is insufficient. In vehicle racing, nitrous oxide allows the engine to burn more fuel by providing more oxygen than air alone, resulting in a more powerful combustion. The gas is not flammable at a low pressure slash temperature but it delivers more oxygen than atmospheric air by breaking down at elevated temperatures. Therefore, it often is mixed with another fuel that is easier to deflagrate. Nitrous oxide is a strong oxidant, roughly equivalent to hydrogen peroxide, and much stronger than oxygen gas. Nitrous oxide is stored as a compressed liquid. The evaporation and expansion of liquid nitrous oxide in the intake manifold causes a large drop in intake charge temperature, resulting in a denser charge, further allowing more air-slash-fuel mixture to enter the cylinder. Sometimes nitrous oxide is injected into the intake manifold, whereas other systems directly inject, right before the cylinder to increase power. The technique was used during World War II by Luftwaffe aircraft with the GM-1 system to boost the power output of aircraft engines. Originally meant to provide the Luftwaffe standard aircraft with superior high-altitude performance, technological considerations limited its use to extremely high altitudes. Accordingly, it was only used by specialized planes such as high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft, high-speed bombers, and high-altitude interceptor aircraft. It sometimes could be found on Luftwaffe aircraft also fitted with another engine boost system, MW-50, a form of water injection for aviation engines that used methanol for its boost capabilities. One of the major problems of using nitrous oxide in a reciprocating engine is that it can produce enough power to damage or destroy the engine. Very large power increases are possible, and if the mechanical structure of the engine is not properly reinforced, the engine may be severely damaged, or destroyed, during this kind of operation. It is very important with nitrous oxide augmentation of petrol engines to maintain proper operating temperatures and fuel levels to prevent pre-ignition, or detonation. Most problems that are associated with nitrous oxide do not come from mechanical failure due to the power increases. Since nitrous oxide allows a much denser charge into the cylinder, it dramatically increases cylinder pressures. The increased pressure and temperature can cause problems such as melting the piston or valves. It also may crack or warp the piston or head and cause pre-ignition due to uneven heating. Automotive grade liquid nitrous oxide differs slightly from medical grade nitrous oxide. A small amount of sulfur dioxide is added to prevent substance abuse. Multiple washes through a base can remove this decreasing the corrosive properties observed when so, 2 is further oxidized during combustion into sulfuric acid, making emissions cleaner. The gas is approved for use as a food additive, specifically as an aerosol spray propellant. Its most common uses in this context are in aerosol whipped cream canisters, cooking sprays, and as an inert gas used to displace oxygen in order to inhibit bacterial growth when filling packages of potato chips and other similar snack foods. The gas is extremely soluble in fatty compounds. In aerosol whipped cream, it is dissolved in the fatty cream until it leaves the can, when it becomes gaseous and thus creates foam. Used in this way, 
it produces whipped cream four times the volume of the liquid, whereas whipping air into cream only produces twice the volume. If air were used as a propellant, oxygen would accelerate rancidification of the butter fat, but nitrous oxide inhibits such degradation. Carbon dioxide cannot be used for whipped cream because it is acidic in water, which would curdle the cream and give it a seltzer-like sparkling sensation. The whipped cream produced with nitrous oxide is unstable, however, and will return to a more liquid state within half an hour to one hour. Thus, the method is not suitable for decorating food that will not be served immediately. During December 2016, some manufacturers reported a shortage of aerosol whipped creams in the United States due to an explosion at the Air Liquide Nitrous Oxide facility in Florida in late August. With a major facility offline, the disruption caused a shortage resulting in the company diverting the supply of nitrous oxide to medical clients rather than to food manufacturing. The shortage came during the Christmas and holiday season when canned whipped cream use is normally at its highest. Similarly, cooking spray, which is made from various types of oils combined with lecithin, may use nitrous oxide as a propellant. Other propellants used in cooking spray include food-grade alcohol and propane. Nitrous oxide has been used in dentistry and surgery as an anesthetic and analgesic, since 1844. In the early days, the gas was administered through simple inhalers consisting of a breathing bag made of rubber cloth. Today, the gas is administered in hospitals by means of an automated relative analgesia machine, with an anesthetic vaporizer and a medical ventilator that delivers a precisely dosed and breath-actuated flow of nitrous oxide mixed with oxygen in a 2 colon 1 ratio. Nitrous oxide is a weak general anesthetic, and so is generally not used alone in general anesthesia, but used as a carrier gas for more powerful general anesthetic drugs such as sevoflurane or desflurane. It has a minimum alveolar concentration of 105% and a blood-slash-gas partition coefficient of 0.46. The use of nitrous oxide in anesthesia, however, can increase the risk of postoperative nausea and vomiting. Dentists use a simpler machine, that only delivers a N, 2O slash O. Two mixture for the patient to inhale while conscious. The patient is kept conscious throughout the procedure, and retains adequate mental faculties to respond to questions and instructions from the dentist. Inhalation of nitrous oxide is used frequently to relieve pain associated with childbirth, trauma, oral surgery, and acute coronary syndrome. Its use during labor has been shown to be a safe and effective aid for birthing women. Its use for acute coronary syndrome is of unknown benefit. In Britain and Canada, Entonox and Nitronox are used commonly by ambulance crews as a rapid and highly effective analgesic gas. 50% nitrous oxide can be considered for use by trained non-professional first aid responders in pre-hospital settings, given the relative ease and safety of administering 50% nitrous oxide as an analgesic. The rapid reversibility of its effect would also prevent it from precluding diagnosis. Recreational inhalation of nitrous oxide with the purpose of causing euphoria and slash or slight hallucinations, began as a phenomenon for the British upper class in 1799, known as laughing gas parties. Starting already in the 19th century, widespread availability of the gas for medical and culinary purposes allowed the recreational use to expand greatly, throughout the world. In the United Kingdom, as of 2014, 
nitrous oxide was estimated to be used by almost half a million young people at night spots, festivals, and parties. The legality of that use varies greatly from country to country, and even from city to city in some countries. The major safety hazards of nitrous oxide come from the fact that it is a compressed liquefied gas, an asphyxiation risk, and a dissociative anesthetic. While relatively non-toxic, nitrous oxide has a number of recognized ill effects on human health whether through breathing it in or by contact of the liquid with skin or eyes. Nitrous oxide is a significant occupational hazard for surgeons, dentists, and nurses. Because nitrous oxide is minimally metabolized in humans, it retains its potency when exhaled into the room by the patient, and can pose an intoxicating and prolonged exposure hazard to the clinic staff if the room is poorly ventilated. Where nitrous oxide is administered, a continuous flow fresh air ventilation system or an 2O scavenger system is used to prevent a waste gas buildup. The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health recommends that workers' exposure to nitrous oxide should be controlled during the administration of anesthetic gas in medical, dental, and veterinary operators. It set a recommended exposure limit of 25 ppm to escaped anesthetic. Intoxication, euphoria slash dysphoria, spatial disorientation, temporal disorientation, reduced pain sensitivity. Ozone layer depletion. Legality. Aerobic autotrophic nitrification the stepwise oxidation of ammonia to nitrite and to nitrate, anaerobic heterotrophic denitrification, the stepwise reduction of NO, 3 to NO, 2, nitric oxide, N, 2O and ultimately N, 2, where facultative anaerobe bacteria use NO, 3 as an electron acceptor in the respiration of organic material in the condition of insufficient oxygen, and, Nitrifier denitrification, which is carried out by autotrophic NH, 3 oxidizing bacteria and the pathway whereby ammonia is oxidized to nitrite, followed by the reduction of NO, 2 to nitric oxide, N, 2O and molecular nitrogen, heterotrophic nitrification, aerobic denitrification by the same heterotrophic nitrifiers fungal denitrification, non-biological chemodenitrification. Exposure to nitrous oxide causes short-term decreases in mental performance, audio-visual ability, and manual dexterity. These effects coupled with the induced spatial and temporal disorientation could result in physical harm to the user from environmental hazards. Like other NMDA antagonists, N. 2O was suggested to produce neurotoxicity in the form of Alnes lesions in rodents upon prolonged exposure. New research has arisen suggesting that Alnes lesions do not occur in humans, however, and similar drugs such as ketamine are now believed not to be acutely neurotoxic. It has been argued that, because N, 2O has a very short duration under normal circumstances, it is less likely to be neurotoxic than other NMDA antagonists. Indeed, in rodents, short-term exposure results in only mild injury that is rapidly reversible, and permanent neuronal death only occurs after constant and sustained exposure. Nitrous oxide also may cause neurotoxicity after extended exposure because of hypoxia. This is especially true of non-medical formulations such as whipped cream chargers, which never contain oxygen, since oxygen makes cream rancid. Additionally, nitrous oxide depletes vitamin B12 levels. This can cause serious neurotoxicity if the user has pre-existing vitamin B12 deficiency. 
nitrous oxide at 75 vol percent reduce ischemia induced neuronal death induced by occlusion of the middle cerebral artery in rodents and decrease nmda induced ca2 plus influx in neuronal cell cultures a critical event involved in excitotoxicity if pure nitrous oxide is inhaled without oxygen mixed in this can eventually lead to oxygen deprivation resulting in loss of blood pressure, fainting and even heart attacks. This can occur if the user inhales large quantities continuously, as with a strap-on mask connected to a gas canister. It can also happen if the user engages in excessive breath holding or uses any other inhalation system that cuts off their supply of fresh air. Long-term exposure to nitrous oxide may cause vitamin B12 deficiency. It inactivates the cobalamin form of vitamin B12 by oxidation. Symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency, including sensory neuropathy, myelopathy and encephalopathy, may occur within days or weeks of exposure to nitrous oxide anesthesia in people with subclinical vitamin B12 deficiency. Symptoms are treated with high doses of vitamin B12, but recovery can be slow and incomplete. People with normal vitamin B12 levels have stores to make the effects of nitrous oxide insignificant, unless exposure is repeated and prolonged. Vitamin B12 levels should be checked in people with risk factors for vitamin B12 deficiency prior to using nitrous oxide anesthesia. Several experimental studies in rats indicate that chronic exposure of pregnant females to nitrous oxide may have adverse effects on the developing fetus. At room temperature the saturated vapor pressure is 50.525 bar, rising up to 72.45 bar at 36.4 degrees Celsius the critical temperature. The pressure curve is thus unusually sensitive to temperature. Liquid nitrous oxide acts as a good solvent for many organic compounds, liquid mixtures may form shock-sensitive explosives. As with many strong oxidizers, contamination of parts with fuels have been implicated in rocketry accidents, where small quantities of nitrous-slash-fuel mixtures explode due to water hammer-like effects. Some common building materials such as stainless steel and aluminium can act as fuels with strong oxidizers such as nitrous oxide, as can contaminants that may ignite due to adiabatic compression. There also have been incidents where nitrous oxide decomposition in plumbing has led to the explosion of large tanks. The pharmacological mechanism of action of N2O in medicine is not fully known. However, it has been shown to directly modulate a broad range of ligand-gated ion channels, and this likely plays a major role in many of its effects. It moderately blocks NMDA and beta-2 subunit containing NOC channels, weakly inhibits AMPA, kinate, GABA-C, and 5-HT3 receptors, and slightly potentiates GABA-A and glycin receptors. It also has been shown to activate two poor domain K plus channels. While N2O affects quite a few ion channels, its anesthetic, hallucinogenic, and euphoriant effects are likely caused predominantly, or fully, via inhibition of NMDA receptor mediated currents. In addition to its effects on ion channels, N 2O may act to imitate nitric oxide in the central nervous system, and this may be related to its analgesic and anxiolytic properties. The effects of inhaling sub-anesthetic doses of nitrous oxide have been known to vary, based on several factors, including settings and individual differences, however, from his discussion, Jay suggests that it has been reliably known to induce the following states and sensations. A minority of users also will present with uncontrolled vocalizations and muscular spasms. 
these effects generally disappear minutes after removal of the nitrous oxide source. In rats, N. 2O stimulates the mesolimbic reward pathway via inducing dopamine release and activating dopaminergic neurons in the ventral tegmental area and nucleus accumbens, presumably through antagonization of NMDA receptors localized in the system. This action has been implicated in its euphoric effects, and notably, appears to augment its analgesic properties as well. It is remarkable, However, that in mice, N2O blocks amphetamine induced carrier mediated dopamine release in the nucleus accumbens and behavioral sensitization, abolishes the conditioned place preference of cocaine and morphine, and does not produce reinforcing effects of its own. Studies on CPP of N2O in rats is mixed, consisting of reinforcement, aversion, and no change. In contrast, it is a positive reinforcer in squirrel monkeys, and is well known as a drug of abuse in humans. These discrepancies in response to N2O may reflect species variation or methodological differences. In human clinical studies, N2O was found to produce mixed responses, similarly to rats reflecting high subjective individual variability. In behavioral tests of anxiety, a low dose of N2O is an effective anxiolytic, and this anti-anxiety effect is associated with enhanced activity of GABA-A receptors, as it is partially reversed by benzodiazepine receptor antagonists. Mirroring this, Animals that have developed tolerance to the anxiolytic effects of benzodiazepines are partially tolerant to N2O. Indeed, in humans given 30% N2O, benzodiazepine receptor antagonists reduced the subjective reports of feeling high, but did not alter psychomotor performance, in human clinical studies. The analgesic effects of N 2O are linked to the interaction between the endogenous opioid system and the descending noradrenergic system. When animals are given morphine chronically, they develop tolerance to its pain-killing effects, and this also renders the animals tolerant to the analgesic effects of N2O administration of antibodies that bind and block the activity of some endogenous opioids also block the antinociceptive effects of N. 2O drugs that inhibit the breakdown of endogenous opioids also potentiate the antinociceptive effects of N2O. Several experiments have shown that opioid receptor antagonists applied directly to the brain block the antinociceptive effects of N2O, but these drugs have no effect when injected into the spinal cord. Conversely, Alpha-2 adrenoceptor antagonists block the pain-reducing effects of N2O when given directly to the spinal cord, but not when applied directly to the brain. Indeed, alpha-2B adrenoceptor knockout mice or animals depleted in norepinephrine are nearly completely resistant to the antinociceptive effects of N2O apparently N. 2O induced release of endogenous opioids causes disinhibition of brain stem noradrenergic neurons, which release norepinephrine into the spinal cord and inhibit pain signaling. Exactly how N2O causes the release of endogenous opioid peptides remains uncertain. Nitrous oxide is a colorless, non toxic gas with a faint, sweet odor. Nitrous oxide supports combustion by releasing the dipolar bonded oxygen radical, thus it can relight a glowing splint. N2O is inert at room temperature and has few reactions. At elevated temperatures, its reactivity increases. For example, nitrous oxide reacts with NaNH2 at 460K to give NaN3. 
The above reaction is the route adopted by the commercial chemical industry to produce azide salts, which are used as detonators. The gas was first synthesized in 1772 by English natural philosopher and chemist Joseph Priestley, who called it phlogisticated nitrous air or inflammable nitrous air. Priestley published his discovery in the book Experiments and Observations on Different Kinds of Air, where he described how to produce the preparation of nitrous air diminished, by heating iron filings dampened with nitric acid. The first important use of nitrous oxide was made possible by Thomas Beddoes and James Watt, who worked together to publish the book Considerations on the Medical Use and on the Production of Factitious Airs. This book was important for two reasons. First, James Watt had invented a novel machine to produce factitious airs and a novel breathing apparatus to inhale the gas. Second, the book also presented the new medical theories by Thomas Beddoes that tuberculosis and other lung diseases could be treated by inhalation of factitious airs. The machine to produce factitious airs had three parts, a furnace to burn the needed material, a vessel with water where the produced gas passed through in a spiral pipe, and finally the gas cylinder with a gasometer where the gas produced, air, could be tapped into portable air bags. The breathing apparatus consisted of one of the portable air bags connected with a tube to a mouthpiece. With this new equipment being engineered and produced by 1794, the way was paved for clinical trials, which began in 1798 when Thomas Beddoes established the Pneumatic Institution for Relieving Diseases by Medical Heirs in Hot Wells. In the basement of the building, a large-scale machine was producing the gases under the supervision of a young Humphrey Davy, who was encouraged to experiment with new gases for patients to inhale. The first important work of Davy was examination of the nitrous oxide, and the publication of his results in the book, Researches, Chemical and Philosophical. In that publication, Davy notes the analgesic effect of nitrous oxide at page 465 and its potential to be used for surgical operations at page 556. Davy coined the name laughing gas for nitrous oxide. Despite Davy's discovery that inhalation of nitrous oxide could relieve a conscious person from pain, another 44 years elapsed before doctors attempted to use it for anesthesia. The use of nitrous oxide as a recreational drug at laughing gas parties, primarily arranged for the British upper class, became an immediate success beginning in 1799. While the effects of the gas generally make the user appear stuporous, dreamy, and sedated, some people also get the giggles in a state of euphoria, and frequently erupt in laughter. One of the earliest commercial producers in the U.S. was George Poe, cousin of the poet Edgar Allan Poe, who also was the first to liquefy the gas. The first time nitrous oxide was used as an anesthetic drug in the treatment of a patient was when dentist Horace Wells, with assistance by Gardner Quincy Colton and John Mankey Riggs, demonstrated insensitivity to pain from a dental extraction on December 11, 1844. In the following weeks, Wells treated the first 12-15 patients with nitrous oxide in Hartford, Connecticut, and according to his own record, only failed in two cases. In spite of these convincing results having been reported by Wells to the Medical Society in Boston in December 1844, this new method was not immediately adopted by other dentists. The reason for this was most likely that Wells, in January 1845 at his first public demonstration to the medical faculty in Boston, had been partly unsuccessful, leaving his colleagues doubtful regarding its efficacy and safety. 
The method did not come into general use until 1863, when Gardner Quincy Colton successfully started to use it in all his Colton Dental Association clinics, that he had just established in New Haven and New York City. Over the following three years, Colton and his associates successfully administered nitrous oxide to more than 25,000 patients. Today, Nitrous oxide is used in dentistry as an anxiolytic, as an adjunct to local anesthetic. Nitrous oxide was not found to be a strong enough anesthetic for use in major surgery in hospital settings, however. Instead, diethyl ether, being a stronger and more potent anesthetic, was demonstrated and accepted for use in October 1846 along with chloroform in 1847. When Joseph Thomas Clover invented the gas ether inhaler in 1876, however, it became a common practice at hospitals to initiate all anesthetic treatments with a mild flow of nitrous oxide, and then gradually increase the anesthesia with the stronger ether or chloroform. Clover's gas ether inhaler was designed to supply the patient with nitrous oxide and ether at the same time, with the exact mixture being controlled by the operator of the device. It remained in use by many hospitals until the 1930s. Although hospitals today are using a more advanced anesthetic machine, these machines still use the same principle launched with Clover's gas ether inhaler to initiate the anesthesia with nitrous oxide, before the administration of a more powerful anesthetic. Colton's popularization of nitrous oxide led to its adoption by a number of less than reputable quack salvers, who touted it as a cure for consumption, scrofula, catarrh, and other diseases of the blood, throat, and lungs. Nitrous oxide treatment was administered and licensed as a patent medicine by the likes of C. L. Blood and Jerome Harris in Boston and Charles E. Barney of Chicago. Nitrous oxide is prepared on an industrial scale by careful heating of ammonium nitrate at about 250 C, which decomposes into nitrous oxide and water vapor. The addition of various phosphate salts favors formation of a purer gas at slightly lower temperatures. This reaction may be difficult to control, resulting in detonation. The decomposition of ammonium nitrate is also a common laboratory method for preparing the gas. Equivalently, it can be obtained by heating a mixture of sodium nitrate and ammonium sulfate. Another method involves the reaction of urea, nitric acid, and sulfuric acid. Direct oxidation of ammonia with a manganese dioxide, bismuth oxide catalyst has been reported, cf. Ostwald process. Hydroxyl ammonium chloride reacts with sodium nitrite to give nitrous oxide. If the nitrite is added to the hydroxylamine solution, the only remaining byproduct is salt water. If the hydroxylamine solution is added to the nitrite solution, however, then toxic higher oxides of nitrogen also are formed. Treating HNO, 3 with SNCl, 2 and HCl also has been demonstrated. Hyponitrous acid decomposes to N2O in water with a half-life of 16 days at 25 degrees Celsius at pH 1.3. Nitrous oxide is a minor component of Earth's atmosphere, currently with a concentration of about 0.330 ppm. As of 2010, it was estimated that about 29.5 million tons of N. 2O were entering the atmosphere each year, of which 64% were natural, and 36% due to human activity. Most of the N2O emitted into the atmosphere, from natural and anthropogenic sources, 
is produced by microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi in soils and oceans. Soils under natural vegetation are an important source of nitrous oxide, accounting for 60% of all naturally produced emissions. Other natural sources include the oceans and atmospheric chemical reactions. The main components of anthropogenic emissions are fertilized agricultural soils and livestock manure, runoff and leaching of fertilizers, biomass burning, fossil fuel combustion and industrial processes, biological degradation of other nitrogen-containing atmospheric emissions, and human sewage. Agriculture enhances nitrous oxide production through soil cultivation, the use of nitrogen fertilizers, and animal waste handling. These activities stimulate naturally occurring bacteria to produce more nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide emissions from soil can be challenging to measure as they vary markedly over time and space and the majority of a year's emissions may occur when conditions are favorable during hot moments and slash or at favorable locations known as hot spots. Among industrial emissions, the production of nitric acid and adipic acid are the largest sources of nitrous oxide emissions. The adipic acid emissions specifically arise from the degradation of the nitrolic acid intermediate derived from nitration of cyclohexanone. Natural processes that generate nitrous oxide may be classified as nitrification and denitrification. Specifically, they include these processes are affected by soil chemical and physical properties such as the availability of mineral nitrogen and organic matter, acidity, and soil type, as well as climate-related factors such as soil temperature and water content. The emission of the gas to the atmosphere is limited greatly by its consumption inside the cells, by a process catalyzed by the enzyme nitrous oxide reductase. Nitrous oxide has a significant global warming potential as greenhouse gas. On a per molecule basis, considered over a 100 year period, nitrous oxide has 298 times the atmospheric heat trapping ability of carbon dioxide, however, because of its low concentration, its contribution to the greenhouse effect is less than one third that of carbon dioxide and also less than water vapor and methane. On the other hand, since 38% or more of the N2O entering the atmosphere is the result of human activity, and its concentration has increased 15% since 1750, control of nitrous oxide is considered part of efforts to curb greenhouse gas emissions. A 2008 study by Nobel laureate Paul Crutzen suggests that the amount of nitrous oxide release attributable to agricultural nitrate fertilizers has been seriously underestimated, most of which presumably, would come under soil and oceanic release in the Environmental Protection Agency data. Nitrous oxide also has been implicated in thinning of the ozone layer. A new study suggests that N2O emission currently is the single most important ozone depleting substance emission and is expected to remain the largest throughout the 21st century. In the United States, possession of nitrous oxide is legal under federal law and is not subject to DEA purview. It is, however, regulated by the Food and Drug Administration under the Food, Drug and Cosmetics Act, prosecution is possible under its misbranding clauses, prohibiting the sale or distribution of nitrous oxide for the purpose of human consumption. Many states have laws regulating the possession, sale and distribution of nitrous oxide. Such laws usually ban distribution to minors or limit the amount of nitrous oxide that may be sold without special license. For example, in the state of California, possession for recreational use is prohibited and qualifies as a misdemeanor.
In August 2015, the Council of the London Borough of Lambeth banned the use of the drug for recreational purposes, making offenders liable to an on-the-spot fine of up to £1,000. In New Zealand, the Ministry of Health has warned that nitrous oxide is a prescription medicine, and its sale or possession without a prescription, is an offence under the Medicines Act. This statement would seemingly prohibit all non-medicinal uses of nitrous oxide, although it is implied that only recreational use will be targeted legally. In India, transfer of nitrous oxide from bulk cylinders to smaller, more transportable E-type, 1,590 litre capacity tanks, is legal when the intended use of the gas is for medical anesthesia.